on a paper town I got lost in searching for something that's so distant It might as well be We are Crooked Fix, and we're super excited to be here on VoxFest. Thank you guys for taking the time to come out here and listen to us play and share us with the world. So that was Daydream. You can find that on our debut record. That's the drummer talk for your talking too long. And then the next song we're going to play is brand new. It's called Disincorporate, and I will hit it. Let's go for it. Let's just say almost Okay, now we go for it. Lost your mind again. You've 
lift the pieces all and Might as well have not begun
well, that was another new song called Two Reasons. And for our final song of our set, thank you, Vox Fest. Again, we're going to play Montreal with Mickey's, Mickey's trading guitars and, and Andy's plugging in. And we're going to do it, yeah. Montreal. <laughs> we're going to do it. Built this way before Lying on the floor Now I want more Left all thought behind A welcome thing to find A crystal mine Just beyond the haze Past wet eyes so glazed into the fray Staring through the blue Shattered glass and you when I fall through Doesn't ever change Trapped inside my brain It's oh so strange A giant step to take There's little left to make For heaven's sake Thank you. We've been Crooked Fix. Thanks, FoxFest. Hey, everyone. This is Evan from Vox, and that was just Crooked Fix, who just had an amazing performance. Um, yeah, if you guys want to introduce yourselves. Hey, my name's Joe Holtzford. Um, I do bass and vocals for Crooked Fix. My name's Helm George, and I sing and I play the guitar for Crooked Fix. Uh, my name is Mickey Jameson, and I also sing and play guitar for Crooked Fix. 
I'm Connor. I hit things with six, and some people call that playing the drums in Crooked Fix. Awesome. So first things first, uh, how do you guys think it went? It was, it was pretty fun. Was yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, it's, it's, it's the, the first opportunity that we've had to play a show in a while, and it's always good when that happens, all things considered. So, um, yeah, you guys fashioned a nice blend of uh, indie psych rock. It's pretty nice. Um, how did you, how'd you guys go about forming that sound? We all listen to a lot of different stuff, but have a lot of similar things I think we all listen to. And so it was a rock bass, which we all enjoy. You know, we've all played in rock bands growing up. Um, but we all kind of venture in different directions after that. So I think that's where indie and psych and maybe some more funk and other elements come into play with it. So. Yeah, and you guys just had an album release uh, last August. Um, I was kind of wondering what kind of inspirations you guys had of that album. Um, I mean, it's it's kind of uh, along the same lines of what Connor was saying. Um, because it was our first album, it, it took us a while to write it. But um, I know that personally, I was listening to a lot of um, Danish pop rock music, actually, <laughs> like Mew. Um, I, I can't speak for anybody else, but uh, I think that we all took all of our own inspirations in from whatever we were listening to at the time and blended it together, whether it was Mew for me. I know that Howl and I listen to a lot of Beatles, um, and Connor listens to a lot of hip-hop, for sure, more than any of us. Yeah, I don't think um, that's Joe's a lot, of indie, a lot of the indie rock comes from Joe, yeah. so you blend yeah. those together and it kind of creates what that first album was in a large part, at least. Awesome, yeah. Was it? Uh, I was wondering if it was recorded uh, before or after the pandemic. It was mostly recorded before. Um, it just took us a while to get it out. Awesome, yeah. Um, and then what's it been like transitioning to these uh, live performances? Because I know you guys formed back in like 2016. Um, what's it kind of been like having to do? You said this was your first actual band, but I know you guys did one for... Um, yeah, we did the we did the cold cuts. It's I mean it's just a learning curve because you have to replace your audience. The the cameras don't clap really so much. <laughs> or move. Yeah, or they don't dance. No smiles. It's pretty sad. Actually. If they started yeah. <laughs> dancing, I'd be a little concerned. So I mean, and it, so if you're lucky enough to be like actually live streaming, you know, you can maybe see how many people are watching. At best. At best, but often you don't, and so it's kind of like I miss my I miss the audiences a lot, and I I, I can't speak for everyone else here, but that's been the biggest transition for me. It's just been like. And it's just, I'm just glad you guys were here. I feel like there's something resembling yeah, the audience. Yeah, was awesome. Yeah. <laughs> that was cool. Yeah, it's really just the lack of audience response. It's tough to get your stage presence going without, you know, the, the conversation that performing can be. Um, yeah, and this probably goes without saying, but are you guys excited to perform again? Absolutely. Yeah, we're uh, looking to have a pretty um, busy summer if we can manage that. So, um, you know, outdoor shows... I won't go too much more into detail, but we've got. We should have a good summer. We're looking forward to it. Awesome, yeah. And um, I was wondering too, how have you guys seen the uh, kind of Columbia, Mid Missouri uh, scene change over your times playing? It's cool because it's a because it's a college town, so I think it's constantly evolving. You know, you'll have a lot of people come make bands and kind of add to the scene and then it like you know four years time or whenever someone graduates it turns over and so it's constantly it's constantly changing there's a few mainstays many colored death i i love them and and um uh violent the undercurrents you know there's there's some bigger dream bands squeeze. here it's got, it's dream squeeze the studio later today. cool yeah dream squeeze is sliding there. through they've been around so there's definitely some mainstays but there's all it's cool because there is that revolving door aspect so it's fun seeing new people pop in and out all the time yeah, yeah. Cool. Yeah, and to some extent, it's been a little difficult to watch it evolve. It's kind of been in chunks because up until COVID, every like semester that ha that was going on, pretty much since we formed in 2016, we were a long distance band. So like these two went up to Boston. I was going to a school in Iowa for a bit. So we were only really around for you know the academic breaks, and so you know we'd obviously go to shows when we could, but. It was hard to watch the music scene evolve in some ways and also hard to feel a part of it at times because we weren't a constant. I mean, um, but we're working on that now. He was definitely. the only one in town. Yeah, Connor was the only one that stayed in town one through one. semesters. And yeah, these two are, are Berkeley boys and I was going to Grinnell College in Iowa. Um, but now I'm back at Mizzou and obviously we've all been here doing online school since COVID hit. So that's definitely been a silver lining and getting more time with each other and you know, time with the scene, even if it's in disarray. <laughs> yeah, awesome. and. Um, so I know you guys manage the studio as well and record with other bands and uh, kind of mix it around. Um, what's that like for you guys? 
Yeah. Um, well, it's it's completely different, and I, I often don't notice the difference until days like today where I have to do both at the same time. And they're they're very separate art forms, honestly. I love mixing music and engineering sessions, um, and I can get really really scientific and heady with the stuff and placing different mics and choosing different things like that. Um, but playing is is also artistic expression, and it's it's one that I. I, don't, I guess I don't feel as comfortable with it now that we've been so removed from playing shows in front of people. Uh, that gave me a chance to sit back in the studio and uh, work on stuff like that, but it is so different. Uh, yeah, I, I think Mickey and I were having the same problem today. We spent the couple hours before you guys came, we were setting up everything in here, and so that's like a, and you know, I'm not very sciencey, but it's a, it's like a left brain, right thing, right, I don't remember which is which, but you know, you're <laughs> using one side of the brain to set up everything very, very methodically, make sure everything goes to the right place, and then use the other side of your brain to just be creative and sing. And as we were concentrating on setting up these mics, and then we started playing. It's like, oh, okay, we have to perform now. And it's just it's just an interesting switch to have to make. But it, it's, I've learned a lot because I've had to change what I do with most of my time, and I've learned a lot about new, new things like engineering and mixing that I just wouldn't have been had the time or been bothered to learn about before. So that's been really cool. Cool. Yeah. If there was one band you guys could happen uh, open for, who would it be? Ooh. <laughs> oh man. Um, I don't think as a group. Jonah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Jonah. What would you guys? Connor and I would go with the Strokes. Yeah. They're massive, okay, but they've see, they've uh, been yeah, yeah, my, they've been like my biggest musical taste constant, big influence in my playing and stuff. And I've recently got Connor hooked. So we would go with the Strokes. Anyone want to add some? Honorable mentions. I'll bring back George Harrison and John Lennon and open for the Beatles. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that would be easy. Opening for the Beatles. I'd go to that one. Yeah. I feel like I feel like realistically though, we could maybe play a bill with uh, uh, Royal Royal Blood. Royal Blood. That might be really fun. Yeah, or like a. They're a little fun. heavy for us. They are heavy. We'd have, um, but we have some songs that match. Or a Dawes open oh opener. We love. They were a big oh. influence for us early on. I don't know. I'm just thinking like, uh, or or possibly. I mean, Red Hot Chili Peppers would be fun. Right. Right? We all love them. Yeah, that's kind of. Mm, yeah, there's a lot of stuff. Again, it's, it's a hard it's question. Our, it's a very it's hard question. More circle of Venn diagram. We're trying to find the middle. Um, Does anyone want this? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then uh, one last question is, uh, what's next for Crooked Fix? I know you guys have uh, two songs that you performed today uh, that haven't been released yet. Uh, yeah. Yeah, we're in the studio, um, working there. Um, keep your eyes peeled. We don't don't have a date or anything like that necessarily, but late summer. but late summer is what we're aiming for, and um, so we've just been working on that. Any free time we have, and then um, like Joe mentioned earlier, trying to get out and do some more shows. So hopefully, it's a it's a big summer for us in those two fronts. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. So that's album number two. He's talking. About. Album dose is coming. Yes, mm -hmm. album two is coming. CF two. Yeah. Unnamed at this point. TBD. So that was uh, Crooked Fix, and uh, yeah, well, thanks for an uh, amazing performance. And we got more music coming up for Vox Fest, so stay tuned. <laughs>